Lots is happening in the news. Are we on right now on the internet, Brian? We are on? Okay, I want to say something to people who are listening. I've got an awful lot of calls tonight, today, and this week, as I've gotten, uh, because of in the news, because of the things that are happening, people are wanting to know, which I'll reference later on. But I don't do this. I did it before the internet. We were on the internet just a couple of minutes ago. If you are wondering what we're supposed to do, you need to go to my Facebook page or the YouTube page and look at Psalm 61 that I just taught back there, because it tells you, excuse me, excuse me, Isaiah 61, which I just taught back there. So you really need to do that because it gives you a tremendous insight. I wish I could preach it everywhere. I wish I could do it here with everybody that's in person. But uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't looked at it or if you haven't been on the internet or Mark Hell Ministries or in Facebook, again, this is not to promote me. This is to promote Isaiah's words. You definitely, this is a definitely must see. So please do that. As I give you in the news side, let me give you a little caveat. Even though I'm telling you some things that you already know, and I'm not going to rehearse all and go over all all the things that you've been that's you've been fed every single moment of every single day from the news which by the way I think you should stop w watching a lot so we say amen I want to give you some of the more pertinent things and give you some of the things that I can show you that I have fact found everything I bring to you in the news is not hearsay and we're gonna talk about that and talk about social media tonight so let me give you the first one obviously the Capitol was stormed and you know that you know the political the political side of it now is going back and forth and being bashed listen Senate impeachment trial, the next step in the Trump impeachment process. So the question now is whether he'll become the first president to be convicted by the Senate and removed from office. So what's next? Well, impeachment is, in is a two-part process. The House introduces and passes the articles of impeachment, which they've done, but the Senate is where the person being impeached faces a trial and potential punishment. So Senator Majority Le uh, Leader Mitch McConnell has indicated before the vote that he will not bring senators back until the last day of Trump's term which is January 19th at the earliest. By, he, by the way, he can be impeached after he's out of office. I'll tell you why. He said in a statement late Wednesday that the trial process will begin then. That would be January 19th. So Trump will be out of office before the Senate trial ends. Yes, the senators will vote on impeaching a former president. What's the point of holding an impeachment trial for a former president? Does anybody know? He will never be able to run for president again. And he will lose his pension and he will lose uh, any post-presidential perks. But Biden will be president. Won't the Senate be busy with other things? Of course they will. They'll be busy trying to, trying to, uh, to rectify or ratify his nominees for his cabinet. So they'll only be able to spend a little bit of time on, on, the, uh, on the trial for Trump, which is going to mean it's going to be protracted. It's going to be long and drawn out. So trust me, the news is going to have a field day with it. So it's going to be a long time. So one thing to keep in mind, while McConnell sets the schedule as Senate majority leader now, uh, he'll lose that status as soon as the results of Ger Georgia's January 5 Senate uh, runoff elections are certified, which they are, and the two new Democratic senators, Joseph, John uh, Ossoff and uh, Raphael Warnock, are seated, and they will be. At that point, new, the, new York, the New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer will become Senate majority leader and will have more control over the proceedings, and you know how that's going to go already. So, impeachment failed the first time against Trump. What's different now? Well, what's What's different now is there was only one Republican that went against impeaching him in the Senate last time. You know who that was? That's right. It was Romney. Now uh, McConnell's saying that he's no longer he, he's no longer going to restrict anybody. They're thinking that the Republicans will jump on board, and so. In a word, Republicans were the ones that stopped in the first place, in that first Trump uh, impeachment trial. Um, by the way, this time, McConnell, rather than protecting Trump, is said to be happy about the effort as a way to ex excise Trump or purge him from the GOP. You know why? Because they never wanted Trump in the Republican Party. And so basically, they want to get him out because he doesn't play that same game. Somebody say amen. Uh, so, will it lead to more votes to punish Trump? Republicans, we're not sure, uh, but it's, it's not clear right now. So, how many votes are required to convict Trump? Well, great question. Conviction requires two-thirds of those present. Now, that's 67 senators. Assuming those two Georgians are seated, which they will be, that means there are 50 senators from each party and 17 Republicans will be required. Uh, pay close attention to the rules, though, which require two-thirds of those present. Uh, if those two Democrats from Georgia are not yet seated, uh, it might require 66 senators. If some number of Republicans don't want to vote against Trump, but also don't want to vote to convict him, they could skip the vote, and that would change the ratio. So obviously, you're going to see it. Uh, you're going to see it drawn out. Why? Uh, because it's political. Politics loves to draw things out, and basically, they don't ever want Trump to run again or his family. So just follow along a little bit as we continue to talk about the slide that America is going into. This one talks about free speech. 
speech. And again, I'm going to give you some uh, insight in a moment. Without freedom of speech, what is going to happen to America? Well, the founders of this nation wanted to make sure that nobody would ever take the right of freedom of speech away from us. And that's why it was enshrined in the Bill of Rights, First Amendment. Unfortunately, courts have greatly in, uh, eroded the right over the last several decades. And now we are facing an all-out assault on freedom of speech that is unlike anything that we've ever seen before. And once freedom of speech is completely gone, all of our other rights will soon follow because there will be no longer any way to defend them. So in early America, corporations were severely limited, listen, in size and in scope. Why? It was because our founders were determined not to let them get too big or too powerful. Our founders knew that enormous concentrations of money and power would be a great threat to our freedom. And that, and that has definitely turned out to be the case. In the old days, if you wanted to express yourself, you could grab a soapbox and head down to a local street corner, freedom of speech. The reason why we use the term marketplace of ideas is because people literally had to use, use, used to gather in marketplaces in town squares and exchange ideas with one another. In our time, the internet has become the place where all, we, we all gather to exchange ideas. But unfortunately, control of all the most important gathering spaces is in the hands of a very small group of colossal tech organizations. When Facebook, Twitter, and others were first growing, they generally allowed people to say pretty much anything they wanted to say, and information flowed pretty freely. But censorship has escalated dramatically over the past four years, and it's reached a crescendo the other day when Twitter announced that it would be permanently suspending President Trump's account. How would our forefounders and our fathers, uh, forefounding fathers feel about that? Well, tech giants such as Facebook and Twitter now have more money than many entire countries do. And in many ways, they also have the same level of power that many national governments possess. Uh, just think about this. President Trump could never take away your ability to express yourself, but Facebook and Twitter can. Of, of course, big corporations dominate just about every other aspect of our society as well. These collective institutions have become extremely dangerous, and they're really starting to throw the weight, their weight around. Until the power of the big corporations is addressed, we will never have a full free society again. Just like leftist governments, big corporations seek to gather as much money and as much power under a single umbrella as possible. Our founders wanted to empower the individual, and that's why they wanted to limit the size of government. And that is why they also wanted to limit the size of corporations. That's why you had, that's why you had monopoly laws. So sadly, it wasn't just President Trump that got booted off of Twitter in recent days. Hordes of conservative accounts have been wiped out. And this has led many to use the word purge to describe what has been happening. Many conservatives have been fleeing to parlor, but over the past several days, the big tech giants teamed up to take the entire platform down, but the big blow came when Amazon's web service suspended the use of their servers. In response to being deplatformed, de de Parler is now suing Amazon, alleging an antitrust violation, breach of contract, and interference with the company's business relations with users. For the, so these people are not playing games. For the moment, Gab.com is still up, and their traffic has surged more than 750% in just a few days. They gained 600,000 people last week. So Gab.com, the free speech friendly social network, says traffic has increased more than 750% in the past few days following the blacklist of Donald Trump from the most mainstream platforms. And I'm going to talk about social media in a moment. So, how long will it be before Gab is taken down as well? Well, the big corporations don't want diversity, they don't want competition, and they don't want dissent. What they want is complete and total domination. Cancel culture is not good for our society. If everyone viewpoints that are not politically correct is eventually canceled, we'll have a society that looks a whole lot like communist China. It's not always easy to listen to viewpoints you consider to be offensive. Personally, I do not like most of which my fellow citizens are saying in 2021, but in the United States, we are not supposed to silence opposing views, viewpoints we, as we are doing right now. Instead, we're supposed to strive for victory in the marketplace of ideas by showing that our viewpoints are better. But in the United States, we are, we are doing the opposite. Unfortunately, the big tech companies have decided that millions of Americans should no longer be allowed to participate in the marketplace of ideas because their viewpoints are just too offensive. Uh, ironically, many of those that are doing the censoring have the most offensive and the most dangerous viewpoints of all. If we stay on the path that we are currently on, there is no future for America, this article says. Without free speech, the system of government that our founders established simply won't work. What is the point of even having elections if we can only express one point of view? In China, no dissent is allowed 
and one political party runs everything on a permanent basis. America appears to be le heading in the same direction. And there are millions of people in this country that are actually quite thrilled that that is happening. Let me give you this one, continuing to follow up on it. Purge. The conservative purge is only just the beginning. All they needed was an opening. And for the rich extremists at the helm of the West social media, last Wednesday's riot gave them their reason. The purging of conservative expression has begun. We knew it was coming, just as we always known it would take every one of us to stop it. Listen, what happened this weekend was not a tweet blocked here or an account suspended there. No, this was much more serious and much more ominous. What Twitter, Facebook, Google, and Amazon did by locking out a president wasn't just a heavy-handed punishment of Donald Trump and his supporters. It was a scorched earth campaign against the tens of millions of people who dare to think differently than they do and the open forums that give our movement a voice. Amazon will be shutting off all of our servers, parlor John Matz, Matz announced to stunned surprise on Saturday. It was the second major bombshell to drop in the new war between big tech and the other half of the country. If the popular alternative to Twitter was scrubbed from Apple Store, Google Play, and any other place users could download the app. Uh, the me message to conservatives is clear. Big tech isn't just coming for Trump, they're coming for all of us. And corporate America isn't far behind. The tech giants used the claim that Parler allowed its platform to be used to advocate and coordinate violence at the Capitol last week. If there was ever a case of p the pot calling the kettle black, this is it. Homeland Security was forced to weigh in this past summer in a letter to the social media giants saying the popular platforms appeared to play a role in facilitating burglary, arson, aggravated assault, rioting, looting, and defacing public property. They said nothing about that, though. Twitter and Facebook responsible. Are they responsible for the burning of Portland and the siege of Seattle? Then why are they holding parlor to a different standard? Oh, but there's more hypocrisy. Twitter and Facebook permanently booted President Trump because he refused to accept an election fraught with irregularities. But they don't mind giving the Ayatollah Khomeini a channel to spew his hate and death to America. This isn't about upholding any rules. It's about cutting off the oxygen to free speech for the right. Uh, it goes on a little bit more. And the domino effect, bashing people from other parts of the public square, is already starting. In some areas, police departments have opened official investigations to see if anyone on their payrolls attended the, six, the January 6th protest. In other offices, employees are flat out firing people who attended the rally. You have the right to protest. Because you're at a protest and somebody does something wrong, and it was wrong to storm the Capitol, doesn't mean your, your right should be taken away. Somebody saying, or you should lose your job. Listen, this is, this is a pinpointed effort to weed out conservatives. The, and Biden's friends on the extreme left aren't, still aren't satisfied. They want even more retribution. Senator Josh Harley, a Republican, a representative from Missouri, book exposing big tech was dropped by Schumann, uh, Simon & Schuster. You aren't entitled to your book contract, can, be, can quickly become United doesn't have to let you into its planes, Marriott doesn't have to let you stay at its hotels, or Visa doesn't have to let you use its cards. And maybe that's the point. This is not just an attack on free speech. It's an attack on the entire movement of people with the intent of driving them underground, keeping them from getting jobs, having legal representations, and even cutting them off from legitimate financial transactions like Stripe has done with the Trump campaign and organizations like the American Family Association. Of course, all of this backlisting, blacklisting comes from the hypocrites on the left who say that living wages are a human right, well, along with attorneys, health care, and other things that's so eager to deny us. Making matters worse, the left doesn't fight like conservatives. They won't stop until all resistance is vanquished and they assume total control of the narrative. They use any legitimate and illegitimate means to accomplish it. So what do we do? Well, the worst mistake we can make as Christians is to panic or roll over and give in to the censorship. As powerful as the left on off switches are, they're nothing compared to God. Somebody say amen. At the end of the day, you can't pull the plug on Jesus. Could this be a time of real testing? I believe absolutely. Jesus said before he comes back, it's going to be as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We all talk about Jesus coming back. We all talk about the end times, but none of us want to live through it. But listen, you don't have to live through the tribulation in order to be in tribulation. And so this is a warm up. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to be teaching on Revelation in about six weeks from this pulpit right here. I'm going to teach it. And I'm going to upgrade it for you. So listen, in America, we've had it extremely easy for a very long time. And that doesn't mean we give up. It means that we get ready. The church is being purified, I believe, with all my heart. It happened during COVID, and the next chapter is starting right now. And we need to stand up. Get into your Bible like you've never gotten to your Bible before. This is no longer a time for people to be casual Christians. 
There's something that's coming down and we need to be prepared. And by the way, you may be afraid of it, and hopefully you're not. I am extremely excited. I have watched the sloppy church in America for over 20 years right now. My heart as a pastor says, God, wake up the church. Do whatever you have to do to wake it up. I really believe God's doing what he has to do to wake it up. Now, you may disagree with me, but I'm telling you, that we, wanted, we, want, we wanted our president and our, our man in there so much that we have put God on and said, God's going to put him in there. Listen, God will do what God wants to do. He's going to do what he wants to do. And the way the chips fall, we have to say whether or not we're going to be part of God's team or part of the world's team. Somebody say amen. Listen, there's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes says that while there are men, while, and while there may not have been Twitter in King Solomon's day, there was evil. Then as is now, God's people need to spend less time on Facebook and more time on their faces before God. And I'm going to just interject something right now. I am so sick and tired of social media, it's not even funny. I got call after call after call, text after text after text this week. Pastor, what do you think about this guy saying this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? I, it, it, took me, it took me so much time just to answer him. I'm going to tell you something. There are so many false prophets out there, it's not even funny. There are so many people trying to make you follow them by them telling you things that you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. Biden's going to be your president. There's not going to be an insurrection. Trump's not going to call out the National Guard. It's not going to be God's going to make, put him in there. I'm telling you, Biden's going to be your president. Whether we like that or not, God's still God. He's still in control. He's still going to take care of us. Come on, somebody say amen. You may not be happy about that. I'm going to go back to my, my message that I preach. I'm going to start preaching my message that I taught. But you can't take your joy away. Happiness, doesn't, is not, happiness is about situations in the world. Joy is about the Holy Spirit. I'm not getting a whole lot of amens. You know why? Because most Christians want what they want. They treat God as a cos cosmic Santa Claus. Listen, God's not a cosmic Santa Claus and he's not bound to false prophets. And we have enough of them. Trust me. Now listen to me, okay? I, we just read in Isaiah 51, do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. Do not hear, just forget your Lord, your master, who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundations of the earth. In other words, don't fear the insults and threats of those who are here today and gone tomorrow. Rather, put your trusting glory of God. It may not always be popular with the world, but as to the test of time, and it will continue to be a foundation we can stand on. So uh, let me just reiterate so people, because they're going to write to me. Do, am I happy that Biden's going to be president? No. Am I happy about a liberal administration? Absolutely not. Am I happy about more liberal laws that are come down the line? Absolutely not. Am I excited about Jesus still being on the throne? You better believe it. Am I excited that finally the church may wake up? Because the church needs to wake up. Somebody say amen to that. Oh, I'm getting a couple of mans. All right, you ready? Fractured America. Politics are not going to solve America's problems. Never are going to, never will. The, the mandate for the church is to worship God. It's to make disciples. It's to serve. It's to, it's to um, advance the cause of Christ. And it's to uh, worship Him in freedom and in truth. That's the cause, and, and have evangelism. Nowhere in the primary cause for the church or the reason for the church being, do you see politics? Nowhere. Jesus never said, join this political movement. As a matter of fact, if you ask Jesus today, if he was here, are you a Democrat or Republican? You know what he'd tell you? Neither. He never took a political stance. Why? Because it's a different kingdom. We have a kingdom that's way above this kingdom. Somebody say amen to, tonight. I'm, I'm looking at people, it's like they're dumbfounded. Somebody say amen tonight. You are not going to lose. Trust me. I don't care if they, if they load up everybody with, with, with uh, liberals that live next door to you. You're not going to lose. Jesus will win, and you win. I'm going to get excited all by myself. I have never seen as much anger in the United States as I'm seeing right now, and that greatly saddens me. No matter what happens, we should always love one another. Unfortunately, most Americans on both sides of the political platform and spectrum are seething with hate right now. Leading up to the election in November, the left and the right were primarily attacking each other with angry words. That's not what you're called to do, by the way, as a Christian. But now the level of physical violence that we're witnessing is extremely alarming. The violence in the U.S. Capitol is just another example of the violence that stretched all throughout 2020 and that's continued in various parts of the nation this weekend. Most of the time, the left only wants to condemn the violence that the right has committed, and the right only wants to condemn the violence that the left has committed. But anyone that wants to be intellectually consistent has got to speak out against it on both sides. You can't be against rioting, looting, arson, and attacks on federal buildings when people that you do not like do it. 
Emotions are running to so high now, and understand that people are frustrated. Of course they are, but no matter who we send to Washington, nothing ever seems to change much in Washington. The truth is the way that our government has operated has remained remarkably consistent throughout the Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, and Trump years. And no matter who is president for the next four years, our government is going to keep going in the same direction. Our government is broken. It's been broken for an awful long time. You think Biden's son's the only one that took money? Are you kidding me? If they opened up the whole thing, they would see how many of these senators are fat cats that all their family has. They're, it's on your money. Come on, somebody say amen. It's a broken system. It's broken. So no matter, many are absolutely convinced that the nation will be saved if their team wins. That is a delusion. It's a delusion. Uh, Joe Biden is not your personal Lord and Savior. For some people that are so proud that they voted for Biden, I simply don't understand how anyone can be proud of voting for a political party that is responsible for the deaths of more than 60 million unborn Americans since 1973. For that alone, our nation deserves a fate that is worse than I could put words into. What Franklin Graham said about the current state of our nation the other day is very appropriate. He said, we are in trouble. I believe God's judgment is coming. For the sins of our nation are great and they're a stench in the nostrils of God. On the other side, it is very important for the Republicans to understand that Donald Trump is also not their Messiah. He's just a man. When he does what is right, he should be commended. When he does what is wrong, he should be criticized. Uh, it should sicken us whenever we see anyone put our politicians on pedestals and worship them. We are not to worship any man. Rather, we're supposed to worship God. So many Americans put so much passion and so much energy into politics. We ought to put that into our Christian faith. Come on, listen. But politics is not going to solve Americans' problem. The only thing that's going to solve America's problem is Jesus. The reason why the United States became a great nation in the first place is because we were a Christian nation. And the only way we would ever have the chance of being a great nation again is not because of any other thing other than turning, putting our backs against the world and turning back to God with all of our hearts. Anyone that comes to you with a plan to turn America around that does not include Jesus is being delusional. At this moment, deception is absolutely rampant on both sides of the political spectrum. Some of the most ridiculous rumors imaginable are flying all over the place. But multitudes of people are, are, are falling, for the hook, falling for them hook, line, and sinker. And again, my phone, I'm going to give you my own personal thing. My phone's blew up this week. Blew up. Pastor, what do you think about this pastor saying this? What do you think about this prophet saying this? You know what I told everybody? Stop listening to social media. I actually told them, get off social media. I, don't, I think it's time for us not to boycott it for 72, 72 hours. I think it's time to get rid of it. I'm going to be real honest with you. I, I think it's time to get rid of your social media. And people are going to say, well, why? Because, because it's, it's fomenting rumor after rumor after rumor. And what it's doing is it's riling people up even more. One side, who do you think you're going to convince putting something on social media? You think you're going to convince the other side? Not going to happen. All you're going to do is you're going to pet each other's pri private, you're pet each other's private uh, concerns with other, everybody else. You're going to pet each other's private anger, and you're going to build more anger. Shadowy figures that don't even want to reveal their real natures and identities share inside information. I got one the other day. This guy works for the, where, this guy's in the Secret Service, and he told me this, and was on the, I said, if he's in the Secret Service and he told you that, they're going to kill him. Yeah. That's, that's not going to happen. That ends up being proven wrong time after time. And yet, some people continue to hang on to every word. Why? Because they want a certain outcome. Are you with me? False prophets have convinced vast hordes of sheeple, sheeple, not people, sheeple, that their prophecies about political events would come to pass. But once again, this election has shown that they are complete frauds. Tiberius Caesar was the Caesar in Jesus' day. Tiberius Caesar would come to a horrific death. Did Jesus ever prophesy about Tiberius Caesar? No, not once. Did he ever prophesy about Rome? Not, not one single time. Listen, so many of the pillow prophets have been promising peace and prosperity, but the truth is, we're in the end times, described in the Bible. We are heading into one of the most difficult times in all of human history, but it'll also be one of the greatest times in all of human history because God's going to be at work in amazing ways. And God has a plan for you too. God specifically placed you at this point in human history. You could have been born any time. And he has purposed for, a purpose for doing that. I personally believe the reason I didn't die in a deathbed of cancer is because my voice needed to, needed to speak out during this time in our history. So quit putting all your passion and energy into politics and so, start focusing on what really matters. Whew. I'm ready to preach. All right. 
Russia, the latest country to roll out vaccine certificates for air travel. I won't read it all for you. Russia said this, you can't travel on any airline in Russia unless you have a vaccine passport. Singapore Airlines, Airlines did the same thing. Uh, they launched the COVID passport. Australia, Qantas Chief uh, Alan Joyce already made it quite clear that he expects international travelers to prove they've been vaccinated. Here in the United States, the major airlines are not committing one way or another yet. They're waiting. A spokesman for Southwest said that the airline, quote, will continue monitoring public health information from the CDC. The latest scientific research and insights from our inter internal and external experts experts to guide our operational policies as we work to support the well-being of our customers blah 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 actually what's going to happen is they're going to follow whatever the government says let me give you another one south Amer south africa's biometric re uh, registration plan the collection of fingerprints and facial biometrics is fast growing all around the world this type of software could easily usher in the mark of the beast no if we took the apostle john here who wrote revelation and we read some and he was sitting over here and i start reading he'd be going like this because it's it's revelation uh, privacy advocates are already pushing back against South Africa's proposed biometric res re registration plan. Under the new policy, the government would collect fingerprints and facial biometrics for every single child born in, born in the country and would link that information to the national identity numbers of the parents. Let's go a little bit further. Let's talk about Israel. Let's see what's going on there. Can the new Middle East alliance withstand the Democrats' party left wing uh, left wing wave? After Georgia's runoff election and the victory of the Re uh, Reverend, which I I don't usually use let's strike that a uh, Raphael Warnock over over Senator Kelly Loeffler American leftists in the Democratic Party immediately called for the radical legislation active to ram through the entire agenda of president-elect Joe Biden this includes ending the filibuster packing the courts and adding new states they could do that such as Washington DC and Puerto Rico to ensure the Democrats end up with between two and four additional US senators why would they do that well if they do do that and there's no guarantee saying they will but if they do it's because they don't ever want to be out of office again and so they're going to do it for the they can do how many of you know you don't have to trust them because they're going to do what they want to do come on raise your hands they're going to do that now listen uh, most of these democrat the democratic party members attack countries like israel they promote the palestinians and so we will definitely see some more of these double standards and hypocrisy with the radical left increasing uh, dominating the political and media arena in the united states it's going to happen so let's go a little bit further and tell you a couple more uh let's go this one let's go to the economy and give you this one how many know what that's from revelation measure of wheat for a penny Black horse, famine. This article says this this week. Soaring food price inflation could lead to more global unrest. Just as if things couldn't get any worse, listen to it. it is, time, is it time to worry about food uh, inflation? The Food and Agriculture Organization's food price index rose for a, a seventh consecutive month in December, by, led by the dairy products and vegetable oils, a three-year high. Vegetable oil prices saw the most significant jump. You're already seeing it in the gas pumps. It's going to continue to go on. We're headed for hyperinflation. Now watch. Uh, cereal prices rose. The reason for the increase is that the, the export prices for wheat, maize, sorghum, and rice all rose last month due to growing conditions concerns in North and South America and the Russian Federation. Drought conditions uh, new materialized in Argentina and resulted in corn trading in Chicago surging to a six-year high. Rome said the dairy index increased 3% for the month. Uh, the meat index increased last month. Uh, food prices have been surging over the last few months. It says, even the richest country in the world, food, po po food poverty has become a real problem during this pandemic. This leaves us with the next imminent food inflation crisis as the central banks are mindlessly rejecting, or excuse me, injecting a record $1.4 billion in liquidity into capital markets every single hour. Uh, soaring food inflation may result in social destabilization. The question is, where will it start? So obviously with the, the news I'm giving you, by the way, this is the most watched part of everything I do in the internet and on social media. They want to know what's happening in the news because I want to tell you what's happening. I'm not happy about it, but I'm telling you, everything is rising up for a reason. When I do Revelation, I'm actually, I'm actually toying with trying to take in the news and inject it even as we're going into Revelation. Instead of a separate in the news, put it in as it falls in in Revelation. Let me give you a little bit more about war so you can see what's going on. China threatens counterstrike over U.S. contact with Taiwan. So America is making overtures to Taiwan. Chinese foreign Foreign Ministry said he strongly condemns the move and accused the United States of violating the terms of Washington's diplomatic relationships with Beijing. But Washington remains a staunch ally of Taipei and is bound by 
Congress to sell its weapons for self-defense. China is going against it. China is up and coming. It is the next one that's coming down the line. Let me give you a little bit more as we go on. This one is Iran's growing nuclear strength. Uh, according to reports of the UN nuclear watchdog, Iran is over 10 times the amount of enriched uranium allowed by the 2015 deal with world powers. So Iran is gaining. It's gaining quite a bit. Uh, the Institute for Science and International Security reported the number has increased 12-fold. They have increased their centrifuge spinning and their, their enrichment of uranium 12-fold. It also goes and says, in addition, they warned the same type of ballistic missile technology used to launch the military satellites could carry nuclear, chemical, or even biological weapons to wipe Israel off the map. How many of you know that's not going to happen? It's not, but a war is coming to Israel. The U.S. bases and allies in the region and U.S. facilities and target NATO even in the far west Europe. Iran is now sufficiently low enriched uranium to, uranium to produce enough weapon grade uranium for a second nuclear weapon, uh, where the second one could be produced more quickly, quickly than the first. That's from Fox News. There is broadly accepted and understanding that they have more capability than previously believed, and their rhetoric is dangerous and reckless. Thank you, President Obama. End time Bible prophecies indicate that nuclear weapons will likely be used on a global scale prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation indicates that billions of people will die before Christ returns to the earth to set up his peaceful kingdom. That's Revelation Revelation chapter 6, verse 4. The proliferation of these devices around the world hints at the destruction to come in the years ahead. How many believe that the rapture is going to happen first? I definitely believe that. The Bible also reveals mankind will not ultimately destroy itself with nuclear weapons, and that peace will eventually come from an unexpected source, and that's Jesus himself as he sets up the only real government that could ever be for man. Man cannot rule man. No government. We need a theocracy. That's the only government. All right, so let's go a little bit further and let me give you this under religion. Government orders Jesus on t-shirts censored as political speech. Now, that should really hit you. When you start talking about Jesus and they talk about it as being political speech, they have really crossed the line. A lawsuit has been filed in federal court against the city of Hart, Michigan. After officials there ordered a t-shirt message about Jesus censored. The case developed when Margaret Whitman, an elections worker, was re relieved of her duties for refusing to hide her shirt and said, my heart will trust in you, Jesus. That's what her shirt said while working at the polls during the presidential election. Robert Muse of the American Freedom Law Center, which is working on the case, said the Constitution does not permit government officials to order a private citizen to check her religion at the door to City Hall. She does not cease being a Christian when she's performing her duties, even as an election worker. He continued, indeed, the First Amendment categorically prohibits governments from regulating, prohibiting, or rewarding religious beliefs as such. And the principle that government officials may not enact or enforce policies that suppress religious belief or practices is well understood in our course of law. Remember separation of church and state? They shouldn't have anything to say about it. All right, so, uh, because plaintiff would not act contrary to her firmly held religious beliefs and convictions, she was relieved of her duties as an election worker. He was also ordered to speak to the city manager, who again told her that trust in Jesus is a political speech. So, also another worker was allowed to wear a shirt saying, one nation under God without opposition. Just that God can be very generic, but Jesus is very specific. How many of you know you die, deny him, he denies you? So, let me give you one I think this is one of the last ones. It says this, Bible sales become, uh, b Bible sales bounce back as people looking up for hope in troubled times. So Bible sales have reached record levels. You know why? Because people know something's coming and they're searching out Bibles. They're buying them all over the place because they know they're in the end times, even the unsaved. This is the greatest time for us to evangelize. This is the greatest time, not to pick a side, not to defend some person. This is the time for you to, to lift up Jesus Christ. And somebody says, look how bad it is. You don't want to go in and lean and tell them everything you know that's happening liberally at, at the left. You want to tell them about Jesus. Yeah, it's bad, but this is what the Bible tells us is going to happen. This is the time. Don't miss the opportunity to evangelize. Come on, somebody say amen. Well, let me give you some minor things. I used to report these. You know, I used to report volcanoes and earthquakes as really great news, uh, biblical news, like biblical prophecy. How many remember that? I'd show people that volcanoes were here. We are so far past that, it's not even funny. <laughs> Listen to this. Caribbean volcanoes come to life. Volcanoes that have been quiet for decades are rumbling to life in eastern Caribbean, prompting officials to use alerts in Martinique and St. Vincent's and the Grena uh, Grenadines as scientists rush to study activity they say has not been ever seen. So our earthquakes and volcanic activity around the globe on a scale and frequency never seen before. Let me give you one last one. This, this came out today. Nature and relief from COVID stress. The coronavirus pandemic has again drawn attention to the benefits of spending time in contact with the natural world. 
A recent survey in the UK found that nearly two-thirds of adults reported that spending time in God's creation provided relief from stress related to the corona through the COVID-19 crisis. Nearly half of the respondents felt that spending time in green spaces has helped them cope with rising pandemic-related anxiety. Another report from the University of Vermont found that almost 60% of those participating in this study experienced improved mental health and reduction in stress as well as a result of spending time outdoors during the pandemic. While scientists do not know exactly why exposure to God's creation generates such positive effects, these studies continue to demonstrate the benefits of contact with nature. Ancient King David, a man after God's own heart, noted the pleasurable nature of green pastures and still waters, Psalm 23, and how looking at the hills brought to mind the reassurance of God's presence, Psalm 121. As we spend time in the creation, we are reminded of the Creator and how small we are in His presence. We are also removed from the stress, noise, and chaos of our man-made environment. The wind, the trees, the sound of water, and watching animals interact naturally is calming. Perhaps this is one reason people flock to lakes, oceans, and mountains to get away on a holiday. God made the creation to be a blessing for mankind. Man, that's good stuff. That's in the news for tonight. We're going to ask you to just uh, pray with us for a moment as we go to uh, wait on you for some offerings. Let me announce this. Uh, if you've donated to Mark Carell Ministries and you're here or present tonight, the donation letters for 2020 are completed and they're at the front desk with your name on them. Please stop and pick yours up. We have them in an alphabetical order. So if you've donated anything, we want you to pick up a letter. If you haven't donated anything, go to them and say, hey, where's my name? Fake them out. Tell them, I should. I should have donated. No. If you haven't donated anything, we understand that. We are not looking for money at any time. We are just thankful for those of you that have donated and caught for the cause of Christ. I'm going to ask if we can pray tonight uh, for this offering. Father, again, we thank you and we praise you tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that in, in the midst of all this news, Lord God, that you're teaching us. You're teaching us, Lord, that yes, the world is, is continuing its evil bend, but Lord God, you are rising up a church without spot or wrinkle. I pray tonight, Lord God, that our confidence is always in you, not not in politics or some man that's elected, Lord God, but in you, Lord Jesus. How much, how much must we go through before we learn that, before we learn the fact that God is always in control? Bless us tonight, Lord God. Bless everyone that is listening. Bless this offering, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.